flight school will learn to fly Ooh, let me take you to flight school Hey there everybody and welcome back So a lot of folks have been saying, hey Jordan my FSX Steam Edition looks how it looks in this video right now. It looks stock, it looks bland, I'm not really happy with the way that it looks. What freeware is out there that can enhance my experience? Well, that's exactly what we'll be talking about in today's video. We'll be talking about ground textures, sky textures, water textures, even a free weather engine, clouds, you name it. It'll completely change the way that your stock FSX Steam Edition looks. All the links will be in the show notes below, and I look forward to helping you guys out. We're going to be talking about where to download them from, and even how to install them step by step. So, let's go ahead and buckle on in and uh, get started. Alright, so let's go ahead and talk about all the freeware that we're going to be downloading and installing today that's going to really, really transform the way that your FSX looks. First of all, we're going to start off at the Amy Creations website, which has a ton of great uh, freeware, but we're going to be using only a few of them today um, in our freeware showcase. So, first of all, we're going to start out with changing the way that the ground textures and the base textures look in FSX. We're also going to be downloading some clouds from the side as well, along with some transportation textures. So, let's start out with what... Uh, we can do to change some of the base layers in FSX. To do that, we're going to download um, three of these files up here the forest, the rock, and the interzone textures. Now, first of all, as you guys notice, there is a 30 and a 50 centimeter um, project. Um, I use the 30 centimeter ones. The uh, difference is basically how sharp the textures look, and uh, really the performance impact is completely negligible between. Uh, 30 centimeter and 50 centimeters, so I just go ahead and use the 30 centimeter ones. So all we're going to do is we're going to download um, the tropical, seasonal, conifer, and missing parts, um, along with the rock part one, part two, part three, part four. Next, we're going to download the interzone part one, two, three, four, and five. Don't worry about the update from version one, uh, from version one to version two, because these are automatically version uh, two by default. Just to give you guys an idea of what they look like, we'll go on over here to the examples. You guys can see here, this is like uh, what the rock textures will look like. They look completely different than the kind of stretched out, ugly, um, stock FSX rock textures, especially when you're flying those mountainous areas. They look so much more believable. Um, if we look at the forest page, you guys will see here that the forest as well look uh, just so... Oh, this isn't scaling properly. Um, look just so much more believable. They look much more 3D and realistic. And then last but not least, um, if we look at the intermediate zones, the intermediate zones are actually like a um, tundra, if you will. They're a non-rocky mountainous area. And um, you can see how great they look here. So we're going to download each one of those. So once again, forest, rock, part one through four, the tropical seasonal conifer and missing parts, and then also inner zone one through five. Next, we're going to look at uh, changing the way that our transportation textures look. And to take a look at what I mean here um, is this is what you'll be downloading. So first of all, we're going to be downloading new railways, new roads, and new rivers. So as you guys can see here, um, the uh, railways look so much sharper, so much more realistic than the stock ones. And uh, as you download that package, actually, um, in the download folder, you'll notice that there's actually... Um, different options for a uh, 30 centimeter, a 15 centimeter, and a 7 centimeter. To give you guys an idea of what they look like, this is the 30 centimeter. You can see it looks uh, not as sharp and as clear as the 7 centimeter does. Once again, performance impact is very, very negligible. So I just go ahead and use the 7 centimeter for all these. Same thing for the roads. One of the great things about this road package is that it actually includes a um, optional texture that includes the cars already on them. So instead of having to uh, use the um, cars animation that is in FSX that is a big performance hog and really hurts performance you can use this um, which gives you the effect of cars I mean unless you're literally sitting there watching cars you know it's great to be able to fly over this it gives you the effect of cars without having the performance hit and this is what it looks like at night I mean it's a really really great looking texture set and then last but not least uh, you guys will see here are the river um, textures they look so much more sharp so much more 3d and just great right next to the uh, railway textures so all right so that's what we'll be downloading there so road river and railway next we're going to be downloading oscar clouds v4 now these clouds are absolutely amazing in fact i believe there's an example of them right here in this background um, they are much higher resolution clouds than the stock fsx ones and these specifically are going to be changing the cumulus layer clouds or the large kind of storm clouds or the large kind of puffy clouds that you see um, in your fsx they're so much more HD, they're so much more believable, they're absolutely beautiful. And, uh, you know, a lot of folks, even though they have payware um, uh, cloud textures, they choose to use these instead in many cases because they're absolutely gorgeous. So um, we're going to go ahead and download that. Uh, and um, next up, 
and last on this page is we're going to be downloading um, the various seasonal textures. So as you guys can see here, we have spring, summer, fall, and winter. And really all these are is that they don't really change the uh, textures themselves of FSX. Instead, they change the kind of tint and contrast and brightness of the stock textures. So obviously, you know, the ground in the winter does not look as bright as the ground in the summer. Um, and, you know, if you've ever noticed, sometimes you're flying on a cloudy day and yet the ground still looks really, really bright. It's very unbelievable. So these um, textures um, appropriately adjust to uh, the seasonal um, ground uh, that you should be seeing, tones them down, makes them look much more believable and much more realistic. And so you just pick your season and you download them, you know, part one, part two, and uh, put them in your download folder um, wherever you're putting all your freeware. So that's it for the Amy page. Next up, um, we're going to be looking at uh, our EN, our uh, sky textures for the EMB series. Now, you do not have to use an ENB series to use these sky textures. Um, for those of you guys who don't know, an ENB series is basically like a uh, post-processing effect um, for many games you can use EMBs and you know you name a game you can pretty much use an EMP in it um, the key to it is is that uh, for me at least it tends to create some weird kind of visual anomalies along with um, it does take up some performance so I don't use an EMB but hey if you want to use an EMB you can google how to um, install EMBs they're typically free and uh, you know for those of you who want to use them it's great but you do not have to use them for this particular um, file so Sky textures for EMB. Um, I'll give you guys an idea of what they look like. This is a dusk one. You can see how beautifully it blends, how realistic it looks. It's just an absolutely gorgeous sky. Um, here's a dawn version. So you can see once again the amazing blending. It looks very, very realistic. The palette is absolutely gorgeous. Um, if you guys watch my lights video where I was at Copenhagen, a lot of folks were saying how great that dusk sky looked. And I was actually using this free texture set. So, um, I absolutely recommend this. It'll completely transform the way that your sky looks in FSX. So uh, you just go ahead and download that. Um, now this is on AvSim. AvSim is a completely um, free to uh, download um, site or free to use site. And uh, actually while we're talking about that, it's important to know that when you download um, uh, these other textures, um, they actually take you over to FlightSim.com. Now FlightSim.com is a free to use site as well. You just register and you can go ahead and download. Um, one thing to know is that if you're using the free version of flightsim.com, it limits you to two simultaneous downloads. So, um, you know, you'll have to wait for one of your uh, downloads to finish, and then you can download another, etc. But you can have two running simultaneously. If for some reason it tells you that you already have too many connections running simultaneously, just go ahead and close your Internet Explorer, your Chrome, or your Firefox, or whatever you're using, clear out the Internet cache, and open it back up, and it'll allow you to start downloading again. Um, sometimes it acts buggy like that. But um, anyways, yeah, so same thing, free site to download from. Um, you have to register for this one and for AvSim, but it's free. So anyways, just want to get that out of the way. Next up on AvSim, we'll be downloading the Simple Sun Mod. And the Simple Sun Mod basically changes the way that uh, not only the sun looks, but the way that the um, kind of bokeh effect or the lens flare effect looks on the sun. So an example of that is here. You guys can see this great looking kind of bokeh effect. Very convincing looking sun. This is actually using that um, sky textures for EMB that we uh, were just downloading a minute ago. And, uh, you know, it looks absolutely gorgeous. Here's another example sitting next to what looks like a... GE90 engine, um, and you guys can see that kind of sun flare and the bokeh effect in the sun itself. So, great download. I use this as well. I'm going to download it and uh, throw it on into your download folder. All right, last but not least, just on the texture side, is we're going to be downloading um, the FSX Airport Ground Texture Upgrade. Basically, this changes the way that your asphalt, your uh, concrete, your tarmac, tarmac and your taxi marks look in the game um, for those of you guys who are using freeway airports it's a great addition so uh go ahead and just click download this takes you over to fly away and uh, this one you do not have to register or log in for um, just go ahead and click here free download and you'll be able to download it all right so great so those are the ground and base textures we'll be downloading and uh, let's go ahead and uh, install them real quickly so to install them um, i created my little fsx folder here and i'm also going to go to um, my main FSX folder. And for those of you guys who don't know how to get there, to get to your main FSX folder, all you have to do is go to Computer, Local Disk, Program Files, Steam, Steam Apps, com Common, and then FSX, and then you'll end up here. So um, these are very, very easy to install. And I'll just show you guys a couple of them because I don't want to take up too much of your time. But um, let's look, for example, the, the Texture Spring Part 1 and 2. So um, all you'd have to do is take this folder right here that says Scenery, 
you drag it and you drop it. And if you guys look, there's actually a scenery folder here in your FSX folder. And so all it's going to do is it's just going to merge the folders, right? And it's going to overwrite any files that uh, need to be overridden. So we'll say yes to merging there. And 280 replacements here, copy and replace. All right, and you're going to do that for Spring Textures Part 2, you know, for um, all these other downloads we just did. Now, some of them, um, for example, the rocks, for example. When you go to the rocks, you'll notice you actually go in there, and it's just the uh, files themselves. So where the heck do I put these? Well, of course, it's here in the README, but um, I'll show you guys as well how to do that. So all you guys are going to do is you're going to go into uh, Texture. Oh, I'm sorry. We're going to go back into Scenery. Sorry. We're going to go all the way down into the bottom, and we're going to go to World. Then we're going to go to Texture. And then we would just take those files, Control-A to select all of them. And we just drop them on in. Do I want to override? Yes, I do. Copy and replace. And great. And uh, so, so that's basically how you install them. Um, you know, if they give you a texture directory, then you go ahead and throw them in just in the main FSX folder. If they do not, then you go into scenery, um, you go down to world, texture, and then you just go ahead and manually copy them in there. Um, one of them I did want to show you guys as well is if we look at the uh, the cars, for example. So the cars, where is it? R railroad. Okay, there we go. So if you guys look, there's a couple of options in here. So FSX default, that's obviously the stock ones that you already have. With cars or without cars, as I said, I use with cars. And then it gives you a couple of different texture options of so 7, 15, or 30. As I said, I use the 7s. And it's basically the same exact thing. So um, these are just examples. You don't have to worry about copying these. You just take the scenery folder, as I said earlier, drop it on in. Yes. And merge and overwrite. Or copy and replace. All right. So that's how to install those base textures that we were just talking about. Now let's uh, look at some of the more complex um, add-ons that we'll be using. Um, and these ones are specifically going to change the way the anti-aliasing is done within FSX, along with the way that your water looks and um, a free weather engine, which is an absolutely great weather engine, um, nonetheless a freeware one. All right, so let's go ahead and jump on into that. So to download these, it's very, very easy. The first one is is the um, FSWC, known as FS Water Configurator. Um, this is a very, very popular add-on for a lot of folks. Um, and basically what it does is that it changes the way um, that your water is not only animated, but also the way that your water and uh, interacts with the environment. What I mean by that is one of the reasons that the stock FSX water looks so unconvincingly blue is because it reflects things like clouds, the sky, etc. And it literally just mirrors the, um, the uh, color of the sky, uh, which makes the um, stock uh, FSX water look very, very weird. It looks very, very blue. So it basically changes the way that it handles reflections, changes the way it handles the moon reflections at night. If you guys notice your night water looks kind of funny, it does all those things. So it's a great, great, great tool. To get it, it's very simple. Downloads here on the page. Once again, the link will be below. And you're going to download the FS Water Configurator. All right, you're going to download that to your folder. And then um, we're also going to go down here and we're going to download here are the wave animations that you can change. Now, I personally um, use, uh, well, at least on the freeware side, I use um, the SHD wave animations for DX9 set one larger swell. So you just go ahead and download that and throw it in the uh, download folder that you're going to be using. And uh, that's it. So you download those two files. And that's a piece of cake. Let's talk about how to install the FS water configuration and our water textures real quickly. So um, we're going to open back up our uh, FSX folder. And then here you guys will see uh, I have my um, FS water configurator download. Um, I believe it actually comes in a zip file, so you'll have to unzip it. But uh, once you do, you just open it up, and then you're just going to click on the uh, installation. That's it. So next, I agree. Next, um, if you're using FSX Steam Edition, you will use the acceleration pre uh, acceleration mission presets. If you're not using Steam Edition and you're using, let's say, the old box FSX uh, that is gold or something like that, you would just unselect this. But Steam Edition users just go ahead and leave these marked. If you want to put a desktop desktop shortcut or a start menu shortcut, go for it. And that's it. So you're all done. All right. The next thing we're going to do around our water. Um, is we're going to open up the uh, texture download, the water animation download that we saw earlier. Very simple. You take texture and you drop it into your FSX folder. Yes, I want to merge. Yes, I want to copy and replace. 
all right and you're all done so once you've installed FS water configurator this is how you use it it's very very simple you open it up first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go on over here to more and as you guys see it'll ask you if you want to install this set FSWC shader um, go ahead and select that if it gives you the option so go ahead and set your shader to FSWC um, once you've done that you go ahead and select your preset. Now, me personally, um, I use Ashton's favorite settings. Now, there's a number of them you can use. You use glass water, you can use night water, you can use black water, you can use, I don't know, all these different settings. I personally use Ashton's favorite settings, and it uh, just changes the way that the moon is reflected, the sky is reflected, etc., etc. It just makes the water look a heck of a lot more believable. Once you've selected your preset, go ahead and hit apply. Settings been applied, and we're all done. All right, now let's get to our weather engine. And this one's very, very exciting. So this is known as FSXWX. And this is a completely freeware weather engine that does an absolutely outstanding job. A lot of you guys have probably heard of Active Sky Next. And Active Sky Next is without a doubt the unbeatable weather engine um, for Flight Simulator uh, X P3D. Um, but, uh, you know, if you don't want to pay for that or if you're just kind of starting out and money's tight you can use this and this is a you know great great weather engine so let's talk about how to install it real quickly so you would just go on over here to the instructions um, and it's very very easy it literally walks you through step by step and I'll walk you guys through it as well first of all you're going to want to download FSU IPC if you guys don't know what that is that is the single most important download uh, you can get in FSX it not only increases stability a lot of times but also allows you to do things like custom keyboard um, and custom joystick uh, command mapping it can uh, you know help you if you're uh, joystick is disconnected disconnecting like Windows 8 or something like that um, it, and if you pay for it it can do everything from helping you with wind smoothing to auto saving your configurations and auto saving your flights it can do all kinds of great things but you can get a freeware version which I'll show you guys how to get right now it has limited functions but it will definitely work um, as intended here for uh, this weather engine so you just go ahead and click on the download link it's gonna take you on over to uh, Pete Dawson's page and uh, you just um, simply click on a uh, uh, FSU IPC and you're going to download the most current version today which is 4.939 and you just click on that and it'll download for you all right all right <clears throat> um, net framework 3.5 you actually don't even need to download this uh, with FSX Steam Edition it's automatically downloaded um, so you really don't have to worry about this uh, FSXWX client so very easy you just download that that's the actual main weather engine wxmapping.bin, this is just a couple of files, download that. Cirrus Cloud Textures, now you guys know we already did download the um, Oscar Clouds. And the uh, Oscar Clouds, once again, like I said, were Cumulus Clouds. These are actually the Cirrus Clouds, and these are great because they replace not only the um, Cirrus layer, but the Haze layer in FSX, so in those overcast conditions or those kind of foggy days, um, they completely transform the way that the sim looks. So um, you want to download these for a more believable and great looking experience. Thermal descriptions, you download this. And then um, there, here are some instructions for uh, how to alter your fsx.cfg. Um, these down here you really don't have to worry about unless you're using the registered version of FSU IPC, but if you are, you go ahead and follow these instructions. But uh, this is very important. So let's go ahead and uh, alter our fsx.cfg. Now to get there, it's very simple. You go to computer, local disk, users, whatever the name of your computer is, app data, roaming, Microsoft and then FSX. All right. So once you get in there, you'll see this your FSX.cfg. You'll go ahead and open it up. What it wants you to do here is to change things under your weather uh, field. So I just hit Control F and type in weather, and there you go. And you can see our weather um, area down here. So there's really only you know three things you need to change. Um, I only really change one, which is the turbulence scale. So the turbulence scale should be set to 0 0.8. Now I've done this before, so it's set there, but um, by default it's set to 1. So you want to go in here and put in 0 0.8, you know, whatever amount of zeros, and that'll change your turbulence scale, um, which basically allows the weather engine to affect turbulence on your aircraft the way it's intended. Cloud coverage density and cloud draw distance, we're going to go ahead and be setting those in the settings later. So don't even worry about those for right now. All right, and then once you're done with that, you just go ahead and uh, click File, Save, um, or you can just try to exit. It'll ask you if you want to save, and you do. But obviously, I've already done that. All righty. So, um... All right, so now let's go ahead and talk about how to install the rest of it. And so to install the rest of it, 
go ahead and open up uh, the folder wherever you downloaded your uh, your files and I put mine here in this part too so WX mapping this is very simple in your main FSX folder where we're just copying over all our textures we go on over to weather and you just copy this drag it across copy and replace great next thermal descriptions thermal descriptions is very easy this is in your main FSX folder so thermal descriptions drop that on in copy and replace and let me just make sure I'm not missing any steps uh, oh I am I am missing one which is I go back to the folder where we had our CFG and um, I miss something here there should be a folder that said WX station list let's uh let's download it one more time just to be safe uh, WX mapping we'll replace it All right, and then we'll open it back up and uh, WX mapping huh. uh, oh never mind okay I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm sorry so this is telling us to delete this my bad so we delete this all right and it'll be rebuilt uh, when we start the um, start the game again so sorry about that all right, so uh, there we are. So we're pretty much installed on the weather engine. The last thing we need to do is install FSUIPC. Or the second to last thing, I should say. So install FSUIPC, you just go to wherever you downloaded it from, you unzip it. And then once you've unzipped it, it's so simple. Just install FSUIPC. It'll automatically install. Here it's going to ask us if we have P3D installed, which we don't. So we're just going to hit cancel. It'll say we couldn't find P3D. That's fine. And then if you have registered, you would click just enter new registration and go ahead if you are not a registered user, user and, you're just, and you just want to use the free version of FSU IPC you just hit not now alright great and uh, that's it so now FSU IPC is installed uh, last but not least is one very very important thing which is NVIDIA Inspector so NVIDIA Inspector changes the way that um, anti-aliasing and, anti and anisotropic filtering is um, managed in FSX and uh, by default you know it does an okay job of anisotropic filtering and anti-aliasing but it's not as sharp as it should be so um, to make those additional changes you want to download NVIDIA Inspector it's very very easy to do you just Google NVIDIA Inspector you download the file and you don't even have to install it really all you do is you unzip it and you put it wherever you want so for example I put it in my documents but um, you know you, uh, you download it and then you just simply open it now what I'm going to do for you guys, instead of you guys having to tinker with these settings, I'm just going to go ahead and put in the description below a link to a Google Drive that will allow you to just download the preset that I've already made for FSX Steam Edition, or for FSX period, and uh, you can go ahead and just use it, and I'll show you how to install it instead of having to tinker with the settings, but if you'd like, you can tinker with them. So all you do is you click this little tool icon once it's open, you go up here to Profiles, and you just type in MS, and you'll see Microsoft Flight Simulator X, you click on that. All right, so these are all the um, NVIDIA Inspector settings. These have already, already been changed, um, but uh, if you just want to do it the quick and easy way, you go up here to where it says Import User Defined Profiles. Import a profile, and then um, that file that I said I'm going to be putting in the description, wherever you downloaded it to, you just go ahead and uh, open it up. And then once it's open, it'll say Profile Successfully Imported, and then you just hit this right here, Apply Changes boom and you're good to go so you could just you know download that file it'll automatically configure Nvidia Inspector for you but if you want to play with these settings you can absolutely go in there and play with them now do not do it without knowing what you're doing um, make sure that you uh, you know Google um, FSX uh, anti-aliasing or FSX Nvidia Inspector first and you know you can play with these as you'd like but the file I've put in there um, should do you just fine all right, so that's it, guys. We are completely done with our um, freeware installation. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what the uh, sim looks like, right? So let's go ahead and start her on up, and uh, we will get to flying. Now before I do, um, I'm going to go ahead and open up my uh, uh, FSXWX, uh, and uh, it's going to come in a zip file. Well, this is our weather engine. You want to unzip it and then you could actually put this wherever you want so you could put this in your my documents along with your nvidia inspector or in your my computer or wherever you want to put it but um, you do want to unzip it and it's great because you don't even have to install it it's just a standalone program you open it up and it's ready to go all right so let's go ahead and uh, start fsx and uh, look at the party started 
Alright, so uh, here we are in FSX, and before we actually jump on into the cockpit, um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that our settings are correct. So first of all, go on over to settings, go into customize, and uh, there's a couple of things we want to make sure that we set here. So first of all, make sure that in graphics you have your anisotropic and your anti-aliasing filtering both on. So this will correspond with the settings that we put in the NVIDIA inspector already, and we'll make sure that we get a great experience. Um, next, we're going to go on over to scenery. And in scenery, um, really the important things to change here is make sure that your texture resolution is up to 7 centimeters. As you guys remember, we uh, uh, took some of those textures, such as the cars and the railroads um, and the uh, rivers, and we installed them at 7 centimeters. So uh, you want to make sure that uh, you select 7 centimeters here as well. And then you want to make sure that your water effects are set to um, somewhere in the high. So whether it be um, high uh, 1x or um, high 2x or even max. I use high 2x. I think it's the best looking and performing setting, um, but it's really up to you. But just make sure they're set somewhere in high so that you get the uh, proper wave animations. Um, uh, next up, you're going to go into weather. You're going to make sure that your rate at which weather changes over time to no change because our weather engine will be doing that for us. Make sure your cloud draw distance is at uh, um, somewhere above uh, 70 miles. So I use 90 miles. As you guys remember, it was a setting um, that the weather engine wanted us to change in our CFG, but I like to change it here in the settings instead. Um, so I set mine to 90. You can set it to whatever you want. Thermal visualization should be at natural, and the detailed clouds uh, should be at cloud coverage density maximum. Last but not least, on the traffic, uh, make sure if you did select the road textures that have um, the cars on them, that you set your road vehicles to zero because otherwise it's going to look like cars are driving on top of cars. So those are really the only things you want to change in your settings. And uh, let's go ahead and jump on into the cockpit and we'll look at uh, um, some saves that I made uh, from the videos that you guys saw at the beginning of this tutorial. Um, and uh, we'll look at the before and after. So let's go ahead and hit load. And Let's look at the first one, uh, which has us here at the uh, default flight. And uh, what I'm going to do is that when we start it, um, we're going to go ahead and just take a look around real quickly, and then we'll inject the actual weather engine, just so you guys can see how transformative the uh, weather looks with the weather engine. Um, so first, let's uh, just start off looking at um, kind of what the scenery looks like before we inject the weather. So here we are, and we're pretty much loaded. So let's just take a quick look around. Immediately, you guys will see... Um, how much different things look. So you guys can see that the uh, ground textures look far more believable. I mean, if you look at that golf course down there, um, just the colors are just so much better than they were before. Um, you guys can also see the water um, looks so much better as well. It looks uh, much darker instead of that weird blue. The sky looks great. And you guys can already see kind of that haze layer that's uh, there already. So, um, you know, it just looks immediately better. Um, but... Uh, let's go ahead and inject the weather engine. You guys will see just how much better it can get. So, all right, now pay attention to this. All you have to do to start your weather engine is just click connect. So, let's click connect. And then let's look at it now. So, watch this. And boom, look at that. Look how much different um, the world looks with great weather. I mean, this is completely believable. Overcast, you know, everything looks so much, so much better. Um, and uh, when we unpause the game, you'll see that the uh, little aircraft is already getting kicked around. But also, look at those wave animations. Those wave animations just look so much more real and fluid. Um, I mean, they look absolutely great. And uh, we got our weather up above, and just everything looks so much better in FSX land right now. I mean, look at those wave animations down there. It looks absolutely beautiful. So uh, let's also go ahead and look at the uh, video that you guys saw in the beginning. And I'm actually, before we do that, I mean, also look at the anti-aliasing on the aircraft. You really don't see any of those sharp lines or those um, kind of alias lines. I mean, everything looks just really, really crisp and smooth. And then if you look down there at the ground, you'll see our little road textures. And we got our little, we got our little cars, and uh, you know, it just looks really, really great. So. Anything. Anyways, uh, let's go ahead and look at the uh, mountain video that we saw in the beginning, and uh, we'll load up that save. Alright, and so here we are uh, at our mountains, and immediately you guys will see, and let me actually slow down the simulation here so we don't crash out of that mountain, but as you guys can see how much better the mountains look, how much better the forests look there in the background, I mean, it is a completely, completely different look than uh, the um, video that you guys saw in the opening. I mean, 
just the, the mountainous terrain area over here you kind of see some of the tundra textures um, you guys can see our weathers there up above I mean it just looks absolutely stunning you guys can even see some clouds down there in the valley um, and uh, you know it just looks all absolutely amazing I mean I uh, I love it I love it I love it I love it so uh, hopefully you guys uh, are able to enjoy your flight simulator a little bit more now that you have these great textures to fly along with and the one thing I would leave you guys with is uh, well two things really number one if you need any help um, be sure to leave me a note in the comments below you guys know I love to respond to your comments um, and if you are going to do that make sure that uh, you have your reply settings set up on YouTube so I can actually reply to you because a lot of you guys are asking for help and uh, you guys don't seem to have replies enabled so I can't reply to you um, on YouTube so make sure that if you are going to ask a question that you allow me to reply and the second thing is that this is freeware and this is great right this is all wonderful but um, you know if you do want payware make sure that you support the developers that make the pay where um, if you're not ready to take the financial dive into payware then keep on using the freeware I mean, it's completely acceptable but uh, make sure that you do support the developers if you do want to use their payware um, so that they can continue to support us for years to come as we continue to sim so with that said hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, really really look forward to uh, continuing to fly with you guys here and uh, I'll talk to you guys all soon all right everybody take care